The final piece of equipment that I want to talk about, and the most important piece of equipment, is the mouse. The mouse device got its name because of its long tail. It sort of looks like a mouse. And what the mouse does is the mouse controls how we interact with that computer. You notice that there's a little white arrow on your computer screen. And this mouse controls that little white arrow. Now if you take a look at the underside of your mouse, you'll notice that there's a small roller ball or some type of sensor underneath that mouse. When you take that mouse and you put it down on a flat surface and move that mouse around, that roller ball or that sensor will be stimulated and however you move that mouse on the flat surface will move the white arrow on your computer screen. So what I'd like you to do right now is just take that mouse, put it down on a flat surface, a table or a desk, and move that mouse around. Now you'll notice when you move that mouse around that if you push that mouse towards its tail, the mouse arrow on the screen will go up the screen. If you pull that mouse away from its tail, the mouse arrow on the screen goes down the screen. If you move the mouse to the right, the arrow goes to the right. If you move the mouse to the left, the arrow goes to the left. Now when you hold a mouse, it's very important to hold the mouse properly. If you hold the mouse properly, you're going to take away 50% of the frustration of learning to use this mouse. The way you properly hold a mouse is you put the tail away from you. Always make sure the tail is away. Then you place your hand on top of the mouse and put your thumb on the inside and your ring finger on the outside of that mouse. And then cup that mouse in the palm of your hand. You should have a good grip so if you shake your hand, that mouse doesn't fall out. So you have your thumb on the inside, ring finger on the outside, and then you have your middle finger and pointer finger hovering above the mouse. You don't want your middle finger and your ring finger laying on the mouse. You want to keep those fingers up in the air. So notice that I have a good grip. Some people hold the mouse like it has whiskers. They hold it with just a couple fingers. And it's very difficult to use the mouse if you hold it very daintily. If you don't get a good grip on it, it's going to be a lot more frustrating to use that mouse. So make sure you get a really good grip. And always keep that tail away from you. The reason why it's so important to keep that tail away from you is when that tail is away from you, the mouse keeps the same orientation. If you push the mouse towards its tail, that arrow is always going to go up the screen. If you pull the mouse away from its tail or towards you, that arrow will go down the screen. Right will be right and left will be left. Where people get in trouble is when they hold the mouse like it has whiskers and they get that mouse turned around where the tail is facing the wrong direction. If the tail is facing the wrong direction, all of a sudden up is down and down is up and right is left and left is right. It gets very confusing. So keep that tail away from you and keep a good grip on your mouse. The mouse might be a little frustrating to use at first, but I guarantee if you stick at it and keep at it, you're going to learn to use that mouse and you won't even think about it after a few weeks. Another important point to keep in mind when you're using your mouse is that you don't need to move your mouse all over the table. You don't need a huge area to use your mouse. One problem I often see people run into is they'll be moving their mouse across the table or across a desk. They won't have their mouse arrow exactly where they need it and they'll run in, into the side of their computer or they'll run off of their desk and their mouse arrow won't be exactly where they need it yet. Now, I've seen people actually push their computer out of the way using that mouse instead of just picking the mouse up and putting the mouse in a different location. They've actually just kept pushing the mouse and the entire computer until they got their mouse arrow where they needed it. Another strategy I've seen is people ran off the edge of a table weren't 
exactly where they needed their mouse arrow to be at, and they picked up their leg and started running that mouse along their leg until they got their mouse arrow to where they needed it to be. Easier than pushing your computer or running the mouse along your body, if you run out of space, simply pick the mouse up in the air, put it down on the table where you have room. That will solve a lot of problems for you. Another thing I want you to notice is pick that mouse up in the air right now and move that mouse while it's in the air. The mouse arrow on the screen won't move. The mouse arrow on the screen will only move if you place the mouse on a table or on a flat surface. So if you're moving your mouse along a table, your desk, you run out of room and you have to pick the mouse up and put your mouse in a different position, the mouse arrow will stay put. You don't have to worry about that. Now since we know how to use the mouse, I want to talk about two buttons that are located on the mouse. The buttons aren't raised, they're just sort of cut out. And there's a left button and there's a right button. The, the buttons help us interact with that computer. 99.9% .9 of the time in this class, we're going to use the left mouse button. So I, if I ever tell you in any of these WebY Seniors classes to click on something, we're going to click using the left mouse button. The left mouse button is used to select items, to tell the computer to do something. The right mouse button we want to avoid. The right mouse button is for advanced users. If you click the right mouse button, you're going get to get a little gray box that's going to appear on your screen, and that gray box is known as a menu. A lot of different options that advanced users can use are found in that menu. As a beginning user, we don't need to use that right mouse button because we can do everything with the left mouse button. So the only time we're going to use this right mouse button is now in the next five minutes because I'm going to show you what happens when you accidentally hit the right mouse button and everybody will for the rest of your computer careers you accidentally hit that right mouse button and I'm going to show you how to get rid of that menu how to correct your accidental mistake. Okay, now, if you accidentally click the right mouse button, take a look at what happens on your computer screen. You get a gray box. We don't want that gray box there. So what we want to do is move our mouse anywhere on the screen so it is not touching the gray box. Once the mouse arrow has been removed from the gray box, click your left mouse button one time and that gray box, that menu, will disappear. Let's try that one more time. I accidentally hit my right mouse button, a gray box appears, I move my arrow off of the gray box so my mouse arrow is not touching the gray box, and I click the left mouse button one time, and that menu disappears.